Hey everybody and welcome to the video, this is Josh here and today I'm going to be going through your Q&A questions. I put out a request on Instagram the other day for some questions, we got a ton of responses back, um, so I'm super excited to get into it. Uh, apologies in advance for the single shot Q&A and for my congested nasally voice. As I talked about on Monday's walk with me, I've been super busy in this cold stretch. I caught some sort of cold and I'm actually at work right now. I was hoping I'd feel better in enough time to get this out for you guys, but I didn't want to miss Friday's upload. So we are shooting at work today. Um, so let's just get right into it. <laughs> First question comes from Iowa native and they had asked, do you drink diet pop or other zero calorie, but artificially sweetened drinks? Pop was my downfall, so I switched to diet. I'm sure you've covered this before, but easier asked than to dig through. First off, kudos to saying pop, Midwest. Uh, <laughs> but to be honest, the last few months, I really haven't, uh, haven't had too many. You know, I used to drink a ton of soda when I was heavier. Uh, Mountain Dew and apple juice were always my, my two drinks I had all the time. You know, I'd get those 64 ounce extreme gulps from, uh, from 7-Eleven every day before work. But the last couple of years I had switched to diet soda and would usually have, you know, a couple artificially sweetened drinks a week. But lately I haven't really been having too much of any artificial sweeteners. Still some here or there. But I've drank black coffee for the last couple of years and um, in the last couple of months I've actually found a few unsweetened carbonated energy drinks um, and those have been a great replacement for me. Uh, one was called Runa and one was called Highball. I'll try and find some pictures and put them up here for you. Uh, but no, so I drink that quite a bit and I've been drinking plain seltzer water. Um, but the last few times I've had diet soda, it hasn't been as good as I hoped. I definitely don't think there's anything wrong with, with diet drinks in moderation. So just keep doing what you're doing as long as you have your water intake every day. Uh, a diet soda here and there or a diet energy drink here and there aren't going to cause any problems. Alright, the next two questions come from Clayton Deneen. Uh, first one, I have lost over 80 pounds and have another 30 pounds I want to lose. What's your best tip not only to stay motivated, but how to keep going when times get tough? I've made a video on this exact topic. I'm going to link to it. But in short, I mean, you just have to figure out what your goals are and if you're willing and wanting to work towards them. Planning and preparation and focusing on your strengths, setting yourself up for success. But I'll link to the video as well. Uh, it's a great one. Definitely watch it if you get the chance. The other question. Uh, also another big problem I have is obsessing over what the scale says. I seem to go one step ahead, two steps back, and the scale determines how my day is going to be. How did you cope with this issue during your weight loss? You know, it's definitely a double-edged sword there. I, I tended to struggle with hiding from the scale, more so than letting it dictate my day. If I knew I did bad, I would just skip away in. And that was my way of not having it real. If, uh, if I wasn't aware, it wasn't a problem I had to fix. I didn't have a lot of struggles with your exact situation. I know Obese to Beast has talked about this a lot. That was a big thing for him. If you know you're hitting your calorie goals and your macro goals and you know you're hitting your gym goals, but things aren't moving right, just stay consistent and keep at it and that scale will adjust and go down. Um, you know, making sure you're adhering to everything that you're supposed to be doing properly, that you're being honest with yourself, that you're 100% accurate with your tracking. You know, if you know you're doing all you can, I think that's going to help a lot without feeling any sort of guilt that you're having a bad day or a good day based on what the scale says. If you give it your best, just try and, and realize that your best is all that you have to give. And if you're not giving your best, well, then you have to give your best if you want to hit those goals. Rounding back to the other question. Next question, Allison K. Martin. Tips for drinking more water. I, I promise that was not segued. I looked at the question after I had my sip of water. Uh, have it around you, always. You know, I always have my water with me as I go throughout my day. I sip on it. You know, I personally like to drink really nice ice cold water, so I go through extra effort to make sure it's cold. 
makes me a lot more likely to drink it compared to room temperature water. You know, get something like this that, that will hold quite a bit of water and will keep it nice and cold. Just sipping throughout the day is, is how I do it. I, I usually will drink about a gallon and a half every day. I know I drink a ton of water and you don't necessarily need to drink that much, but once you get in the habit of drinking that amount of water or whatever amount of water you're trying to go for, it, it gets a lot easier to stick to. I know I've, I've seen people before will get a, um, you know, if they're trying to hit a gallon, they'll get a whole gallon sized container or a gallon jug and put time markers on the, uh, on the side. You know, so you know by 2 p.m. you should have this much water done or by 4 p.m. you should be down to this level. Um, so that might be something to check into and see if it helps for you. But honestly, and just making it part of your routine and part of your lifestyle was the biggest thing that got me into it. Now if I go a couple of hours without having a glass of water, it's, uh, I feel like I'm dying. And, and I've also noticed a huge impact in my energy levels the following day if I'm not drinking enough water. I think I've made a video about this before. I'll link that if I did. Um, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can find and leave a link for that. All right, next question is from Northwest Bearded Badass, and they had asked, do you share tips and tricks with other YouTubers? Also, do you get motivation from other YouTube channels? Just wanted to say thank you for being a big part of my inspiration going down weight loss journey. Started at 290 in March 2016, and today I weigh 212. First off, amazing progress awesome work uh, really really that's so cool to hear you know I, I talk to a lot of folks that are starting off uh, when they find the channel and and tell me they're kind of starting stages it's always very very satisfying to hear these updates I'm glad everything's been going very well for you uh, so first question do you share tips and tricks with other youtubers um, I gladly would <laughs> if uh, if anyone has any questions not sure if you mean more along the lines of video quality or just tips for running a YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, I would gladly share tips. I feel like I'm the one that needs tips more so than uh, than sharing tips with others. But I, uh, yeah, I would have no problem with that. I've tried to think of a good video to make with um, with something along those lines, but just never really found a good idea that I thought was worth making. Um, so if you have any ideas or specific questions or things about YouTube channels you want me to answer, I'd love to do that. Uh, literally, this is uh, is my day-to-day -day now. You know, you guys are all losing weight. My um, All of my effort and strength and willpower goes into uh, keeping this channel running, so I'd gladly share with, uh, with you guys if you're interested. And for your other question, um, do you get motivation from other YouTube channels? Yes, yes, absolutely yes. Um, a few new ones that I've recently found that have been a big inspiration for me and um, and have just been a joy to watch. Uh, number one is Zach Kravitz. You know, he uh, he originally started off as a fitness YouTuber, but has transitioned more into vlogs and just really high quality videography, cinematography, storytelling. Um, his channel is a joy to watch. I would strongly, strongly urge you to uh, to go and check his channel out. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, tell him I sent you. I haven't actually reached out to say hi, but if, uh, if for some reason you end up seeing this, Zach, I've been loving your channel. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, another big one along the same lines is uh, Peter McKinnon. He does um, videography tips and education and also vlogging content. Um, I've been watching a lot of his channel recently. He, uh, he just hit a million subscribers. He is just rising up to the top. Both of them deserve all the love that, uh, that you give them if you go and check their channels out. Incredible. Yeah, so those would be my two main inspiration sources right now for YouTube videos. All right, next question comes from Kathy Blue, and they had asked, what was your go-to form of exercise in the early days of your weight loss? Yeah, so in those very early stages, I would, I would lift weights. I was mostly just doing arm stuff. I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to have big muscles. So I did that mixed with just some elliptical. I remember I'd do 45 minutes uh, every time I went to the gym on the elliptical machine. Uh, but then from there, 
you know, during the bulk of my weight loss, I really didn't do much more than walking. A light activity like walking will activate your slow twitch muscles in your body. And that really does a lot of the benefits to your metabolism that exercise in general does. Um, so even something as simple as walking is more than enough activity for weight loss. Uh, if I could go back, I, I definitely would lift weights just because I do enjoy weightlifting. I think it's important to find some sort of exercise or activity that you enjoy that fits into your life well. But I don't think there's necessarily any certain form of exercise that's gonna be perfect for everyone. Find what you enjoy that, that gets you up and moving and do that. But even something as simple as walking is gonna be more than enough. Next question comes from Ever Evolving Kelly. What were some of your favorite non-scale victories you had during your weight loss journey? After a little bit of thinking, I have, I've got one. Um, I think the, the big thing for me, when I got to the weight where I could shop anywhere I wanted, that was probably the biggest non-scale victory for me. Um, not necessarily a certain size, but I, I used to walk by all of these stores in the mall and uh, I'd really like their clothes, but it would be pointless to go in because I knew nothing would fit me in that entire store. Uh, that was a big thing for me. I'm sure there are a bunch of others. That was just the first one that came to mind. And speaking of that, I'm going to use that for, uh, for the comment section down below. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your biggest change was beside your weight um, during your weight loss. What was your biggest non-scale victory? I'd love to hear everyone's answer to that. The, uh, the next question <laughs> it comes from Galactic Mess, and they had said more recipes, parentheses, in question form. Absolutely. Uh, I am aiming to do them now and have been for the last couple of months, but the, the unofficial schedule for the recipes from now on is going to be every other Friday. Uh, so next week, Friday, I've got a really great recipe for Brussels sprouts that will be coming out. But coming up with new recipes for the channel has really brought back my love of cooking. Uh, so definitely every other Friday, you can expect the recipes from me from now on. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Next question comes from Macromade2017. He says, I have a couple. Did you ever stop dieting or eating maintenance during your weight loss journey and then start dieting again? And do you even bulk, bro? So to answer the first question about maintenance, yes, um, I absolutely took breaks. And I think that's an important tool to have in your back pocket. If you're someone that has a lot of weight to lose, like I did, you know, your body is going to require those breaks. And I, I think scheduling that stuff in is going to set yourself up a lot better to continue going and to continue losing weight. You know, in the early stages, I did not do that. And I think that was a really big reason why I had so much trouble and so many backslides when I was losing weight. Uh, I was trying to do too much too soon and um, and it just backfired. It, it was too extreme. And that's why I, I'm a big advocate for flexible dieting over so many restricted food diets. Um, I don't think anything should be off limits. I think if you allow yourself to take breaks or if you allow yourself to eat your favorite food or some sort of bad food, I, I, I think if you have the mindset that that's okay, it's going to set you up best to keep going. Um, so yeah, there's no harm in taking a week, taking two weeks, taking two days, uh, eating at maintenance kind of refreshing your brain into the next step and the next push of your weight loss. So yeah, that's absolutely something I utilized um, along the way as I learned. Uh, I wish I would have utilized that sooner. But yeah, and that's something I, I would definitely recommend for anyone. If, if you're feeling just worn out and you can't give another ounce of effort, take a few days, let your brain relax. Um, willpower fatigue is a very real thing. We've talked about that before. Yeah, so it's something I would definitely recommend. All right, and the last question comes from Candy, and she had asked, hi Josh, are you an early bird or do you like sleeping in? Um, I am an early bird now through and through. Never thought I'd see the day. I was the teenager that would stay up until it was daylight. <laughs> I used to be in a band and we toured and we used to play a lot of late bar shows and things. So it was not uncommon for me to get home from my night at 5, 6, 7 a.m. in the morning, the following morning, and go to bed. Uh, I, I used to stay up late. Nowadays though, I am up usually by six o'clock 
without an alarm seven days a week. You know, those morning hours are, are my time. I, I love having my morning routine. I think it sets up my day in the best way possible. Uh, those morning hours are also too my time to, uh, to answer comments for you guys. You know, I'll usually wake up, make my coffee, check my emails, answer comments, um, and it just gives me those couple of hours before I have to come to my other job to really focus in on my day. Definitely an early bird these days. But that was it for the questions, you guys. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too long. You know, make sure to leave me a comment down below. I, I do want to know what your favorite non-scale victory was on your weight loss so far. And make sure to like the video if you did. It really helps the channel grow and gain exposure. And subscribe if you're not already. But until next time, I'm going to head off back to work. Hopefully get some relaxing in today. But I will talk to you all later. Have a good one.